What's up guys, Justin here from thesketchupessentials.com. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create a construction detail and how to group that so that you can hide parts of it so you can see the whole assembly. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so one of the things we're going to focus on in this video is the way that we need to organize this so that we can do kind of a construction cut through. So, and I'm basically going to go with just kind of a sloped roof that's going to have some shingles on top of it with some bat insulation. So, um, Basically what we're going to do is we're going to start off and you can delete out the default model But we're going to start off and we're just going to model our framing So all I'm going to do is I'm going to activate the, or the rectangle tool I'm going to tap the right arrow key to lock this to the red axis And then I'm just going to start modeling So in this case I'm going to make this a 4 inch by 4 inch piece of lumber And I'm just going to extrude this We'll call it 4 feet for right now um, So... You know what, we'll go ahead and make it six feet. So we'll make this another two feet. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna model the uh, sloped studs. So I'm gonna go ahead and group this. And it's really gonna be important that you group all of your different components and, or that you group all of your geometry in here to keep things from merging. Um, but also so that you can come in here and you can uh, adjust your visibilities to be able to see different parts and pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to come probably 12 inches off this face. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to model my kind of sloped wood rafters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the protractor tool to come in here and draw an angle. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an angle and we'll just pick something. I think I'll probably go with 35 degrees. So that's just kind of giving me the angle that my roof is going to be. So, and that can vary. We're just gonna kind of pick something at this point. And I'll go ahead and I'll just draw this probably four feet along here. So, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this. We'll go ahead and call it two inches. I know the dimensions of these aren't necessarily two inches, but we'll call it two just for simplicity right now. So what I'm gonna do once I've kind of drawn these initial lines is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna draw perpendicular lines um, from this point up here along the top if it'll let me do that so maybe I need to do it from the midpoint so if you select a point on this line and you move your mouse to the right place what it'll do is it'll inference to perpendicular so in this case maybe we'll go ahead and we'll call these 10 inch boards so and then what we can do is we can create a copy of this at each one of these points And then we can just kind of fill this in. And then you can just kind of extrude this down a little bit. So you can extrude it until it overlaps this beam just a little bit. And honestly, this looks a little thick. So we'll go ahead and push pull this down a little bit. Um, we'll probably push it, push pull it down probably. We'll say two inches I think that leaves this as a two by eight so we'll go ahead and call that our framing for right now um, and then what we're gonna do is you can come in here and you can kind of detail around this edge um, so that this so that now if I hide this you could actually come in here and you could push pull this to this back side so you actually have your uh, you actually have your rafters in here kind of notched out the way that they would be if you were actually going to build this so and then what we're going to do is we're going to triple click on this to select it and we're going to click make component and we'll just call this rafter and what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple copies of it so we can probably assume these are spaced every 18 inches or so. So I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy at 18 inches, and then I'm gonna hit times two. And so that'll create two, or I'm gonna hit times two and then hit the enter key. And what that'll do is that'll create two copies of this. So now what you have is you have kind of your rafter framing in here. Well now um, what we're gonna do is there's gonna be kind of nailers across this piece right here. So all we're gonna do to draw those is we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna draw our board and we can draw this perpendicular. And I'm just drawing these as two inches by four inches. Um, you know, you're gonna wanna use the actual dimensions of your lumber when you do this. But for right now, I'm okay with doing it this way. And 
all I'm going to do is I'm going to push pull this so that it goes to the end. And honestly, these probably don't even need to be two inches thick. So I'm going to push pull this down about an inch. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So, and probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another copy of this so that everything looks a little bit more spaced out and a little bit more complete. Well, then you can uh, select all of this. You can make these components as well, and you can just call these like nailers or something like that. And then you can do the same thing where you can move them. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select this and I'm gonna move it, but I'm gonna use this corner as my base point. So you can see how as long as I use the corner as my base point, it really doesn't matter as long as I have this object selected, it really doesn't matter where my base point is. So I'm gonna activate copy mode by tapping the control key. I'm gonna click once on this corner and we'll go ahead and call this 18 inches and we'll hit times two in here. So now you have these kind of nailer boards in here as well. Um, and then one other thing we can start doing is we can start grouping these by type. So in this case, I'm gonna group my rafters and you can even come in here and label everything in your actual outliner. So if you want to keep everything organized, so we can call this one rafters, we can call this one four by four. And I realize these may not be the exact dimensions that you would actually construct these with, but this is more of an example of how to model this stuff so you can do your cuts and that kind of thing. So I can call this one nailers. So now we've kind of got our framing um, figured out on this detail well the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to come in here and we're going to model our plywood and also our our underlayment and then our shingles and we're going to draw each one of these as a different layer so first thing we're going to do is you can see how if i use the rectangle tool to draw this it's not necessarily um, laying it down on this face the way that i want it to um, so what we're going to do instead is we're just going to use the corners of these nailers is kind of an inference piece. So you can see how that lets me draw this face in here and then we'll just kind of move it around the way, the way that we want to move it. So, and probably the best way to do that is to go ahead and give this some depth. So let's say this is half inch plywood. So, or three eighths inch plywood. We'll just push pull this to three eighths. So that gives us a little thickness and then we can come in here and we can use the push pull tool to make this a little bit longer and a little bit wider if we need to. So I'm basically gonna use the edges of these rafters as kind of my inference point right there. And then we'll triple click on this, we'll right click on it and we'll make it a group. And then we'll label it in our outliner as plywood. So that's gonna be our sheathing. So we're gonna come in here with our line tool and we're gonna draw another layer on here. And you wanna make sure that you uh, draw this to the top corners of this plywood piece. So zoom in a little bit when you're doing this just to make sure that you're picking the right point. So if you don't pick the right point, it's not gonna draw a face in there. So when you click on this, uh, it should go ahead and draw a face in here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on that, we'll make that a group, and we'll call that, we'll just call this one underlayment. So we'll call this one underlayment. And at the moment, I'm not gonna give it any thickness. I may come back in and change that later. But for right now, I'm gonna just kind of leave that um, in there as just just a layer or a group for right now. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and color these up just so there's not as much confusion when you're looking at them. So we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna select the materials. And uh, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I think there's a pretty good, so we'll bring in this wood lumber material and then we'll just, uh, we'll just resize it. So you just apply the material, then come in here and click edit. And you can just adjust this to like 12 inches. I think that's probably good enough for right now. So we'll apply that as our wood lumber material and we'll go ahead and apply that to our nailers as well. And then for our plywood, we'll just use this wood plywood knots material. And I'm gonna hide our underlayment layer for just a second and take a look at this. So you see how, so right now, this section is about five foot by four foot. And generally a sheet of plywood is gonna be about four foot by eight foot. So what we can do is we can use that to kind of figure out um, the size that we want this to be. I think it's pretty close. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to four foot by four foot for the texture material. 
but now what you've got is you've got you've got your wood framing in here you've got your nailers you've got your plywood and then if I come in here and I unhide this underlayment then you can see what you get is you get this kind of uh, you get this kind of glitchy look because the underlayment doesn't actually have any thickness so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this out we'll start and we'll try to push it out about a sixteenth just to give it some thickness now you can see when I fly around on it it's not a it's not a giving you that kind of glitchy face mechanic so and then all we need to do on this one is we'll just come in here and we'll select I think probably we just want to select a black color for this one so we'll just go up to colors and apply a black color so now we've got kind of this black color in here that's that's it for our underlayment and then we're just gonna come on top of this one more time and again you gotta make sure you kind of zoom in so that you're getting the top of this underlayment so make sure you're getting the right corners and we'll just draw one more face on here for our shingles so I'm gonna hide my underlayment just to make this a little easier and then you can see what happened is one of my lines didn't get drawn in here so I'm just gonna draw this across there we go and that'll apply a face so and this is gonna be our shingles layer so basically we're coming in here and we're just grouping everything we're just kind of grouping everything by type at the moment and then you can come in here and you can pick a shingle material that you like so in this case I'm just gonna use this uh, roofing shingles asphalt and again you can come in here and you can adjust the size so that it looks the way that you want it to look and then probably I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little bit of thickness too um, just so it's not gonna be super thick it's just gonna be thick enough that you don't get that face glitching that you get with a single face and then I'm gonna triple click on this I'm gonna right click on it I'm gonna make that a group and so now we'll call this one shingles so and the one thing that we're probably missing here right now is actually going to be somehow I applied shingle material to my nailer so I'm gonna come back in there and fix that the one other thing that I kinda of wanna do in here is I wanna draw in some insulation so all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to come in here and use the perpendicular inferencing kinda of like we did before to draw a face and then I'm just gonna push pull that up like this and then we can triple click on that we can make it a component and we can call it insulation and then we can make a couple copies of it using the move tool and then I don't think there's a built-in insulation material in SketchUp right now so probably what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to the 3d warehouse and I'm gonna borrow a material from another model so we'll just come in here and we'll search for a shingle roof detail and see if we can find one that has a bat insulation material. Um, I don't see anything in here. Maybe we'll just search for bat insulation. There we go. So there's a model in here called eight foot bat insulation. And let's see, it's got one material in it, so it's just a crumpled paper. I don't necessarily like that. You know what we'll do is we'll just apply a yellow color to this. So we'll come in here, we'll pick kind of a yellowish color and apply it to each one of these. And you know what we could do is we could use that crumpled paper material. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna click on materials. We're gonna click download. It's gonna download that into your model and then you can apply it to this face and so you can see how now you've got kind of a yellow here and also you've got kind of this paper material and what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm going to use position texture to rotate this material and kind of place it so you can see how all I did was I came in here and I used those pins to adjust this material so now I've got a bad insulation with kind of a crumpled paper on the backside kind of like insulation would have so now what you've got is you've got your whole assembly in here and it's actually modeled so and what you could do is you could come in here and you could apply like a section plane to it so you could cut it across kind of like this but your problem is going to be it's not really helping you in the sense that you can't actually see the different assemblies when you zoom in um, so it's just kind of got some cuts 
but you can't come in here and you can't cut the different materials because you can't do multiple active section planes in your overall model. But what you can do is you can have an active section plane in every one of your groups. So if I come in here, I'm going to group all of these. Like for example, let's say that I wanted... What I can do is I can double click inside my shingles group. I'm going to delete this section. I can go inside my shingles group by double clicking. And I can bring a section plane across. And I could also probably rotate it kind of like this. So I could cut my roofing across like that. And then I could come inside my underlayment. And I could bring a different section plane across to cut my underlayment. So you see what I've got once I hide my section planes is I've got to cut through my underlayment and I've got to cut through my shingles so that you can see the different assemblies. And then you could come into your plywood and do the same thing. So now you can see what you've got is you've got your roofing material in here and you've got to cut across that. You've got your underlayment showing up and you've also got your plywood showing up. But then you've also got your bat insulation in here still. You've got your nailers and you've got your framing. So I'm going to turn these section planes off for a second. But one thing I'm noting is because the shingles layer is so thin, these lines are kind of showing through. So what we're going to do is we're just going to extrude this a little bit thicker. So we're going to bring this out probably another, we'll call it an eighth of an inch. Um, just so you have enough thickness so that your lines aren't really showing through any in here anymore. So that way you're not, that way this looks a little bit more natural. And you can kind of play around with like where your section planes are. So you can kind of adjust the way everything looks. You can kind of move them out like this. If you want to, maybe in your shingles, you don't necessarily want this section plane. Maybe you don't necessarily want that section plane to be angled like that. Maybe you just want to come in here and you just want to use the arrow keys to lock it to the red axis and just do a cut kind of like this. So now you can see you've got your shingles, you've got your underlayment, you've got your plywood, and you can still kind of see the other stuff as well. So you can come in here and kind of mess around with that and kind of adjust the way everything looks to make sure that you like it. That's where we're going to wrap up today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, did you like this video? Uh, should it have been more in-depth? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. It's got everything from links to my Patreon page to some extensions you can purchase to help support the show. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.